Hey guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different. So, usually I do tutorials. Today, this won't be a tutorial, but we are going to be talking about Revit and just exploring the way that I approach working in Revit and how I tend to find these uh, different solutions, hacks, workarounds for certain things in Revit. So, uh, a, a lot of times I hear from friends, colleagues, other architects, or just people online that something cannot be done in Revit. It can't be done, it's impossible, you shouldn't use Revit. So this is quite common and I, I hear it very often. And uh, basically how I tend to look at Revit, it's not uh, that uh, something can or cannot be done. So maybe there is a floor tool, so that can be done. And there is not a tool for something else, so that cannot be done. I tend to ask myself, how can something be done? So uh, there are always solutions and workarounds and Revit is basically built in such a way that you can use different tools for uh, achieving different things and you can find workarounds. It's still, even though it's been out a long time, it's still, I consider it a young piece of software that's being developed uh, over over the years. So it's still something that's, uh, that's very new and that has to be upgraded and updated uh, often uh, and it's going Going to expand and be better with new generations but until then we have to find these workarounds and hacks so for this video I thought about maybe going through some of my older tutorials and basically just exploring my approach, how I look at maybe a problem or an issue that has to be dealt with or something that has to be achieved within Revit and then how I used some of Revit's tools uh, in an alternative way or in an alternative fashion in order to get to that uh, per particular solution that I'm looking for. So let's go through those tutorials and all of these tutorials and courses will be be linked in the description. Some of them are just regular uh, YouTube tutorials and some of them are my advanced uh, Balkan Architect courses which can be found on my Patreon. Uh, first a link in the description of this video. Okay so let's uh, let's take a look at some of those. So the first one that I've, uh, I've opened up here is the road markings in Revit. So road markings in, in Revit, so we have some tools and we have some options where you can uh, host uh, the uh, some road markings on uh, topo surfaces, but it's difficult to use and you can't do anything. You can't do everything uh, with that. You can't uh, make lines that follow the curve of, of the road and things like that. So for something like that, I wanted to find an alternative solution and I thought about it. What tool do we have that can follow the contour line of a topo surface? And a solution for that uh, that comes with Revit, I think 2019 and 2020, is that we have railing that follows uh, or can be hosted on topography and it can follow the fluctuations within topography. So that's what I used. I created a railing a piece of railing and it's just continuous railing and it's just one rail that's on the floor and it has a width of a line and I used that for road markings in Revit. So that's how I used the railing tool in an alternative fashion in order to get to a solution that I wanted which is road markings. Uh, moving on uh, also as, as far as roads uh, for curbs for example we can use uh, we can use railing as well to create curbs and then host those on, on topography as well. Uh, let's go on. So, for example, uh, this is the course that came out uh, a week or two uh, ago. So, this is a course on Revit detailing for my office building project. I'm doing this whole big project from start to finish uh, on my Patreon. And there, I, I uh, when, when the topic of detailing came along, I show you how you can use both detailing detail elements and model elements for some solutions. People tend to think that you can only solve problems through modeling things, but no, you have these detailing tools and Revit was, uh, basically the idea of Revit is that for broad elements of the building you use model elements and then to do detailing and things like that you have detail elements which can be just regular 2D elements like you would in AutoCAD or things like that. It's just way simpler and there it's not always necessary to model everything. 
it's not time efficient. So uh, for some things you can use detail elements and I show you in this course how can you expand on your details by using all of these uh, detail elements uh, in an alternative fashion I guess in order to model every sheet metal or insulation, how insulation wraps over each other, things like that. So that's what they go over in this course. Uh, moving on, for example, the raised floor tutorial that I have done. Uh, there, there isn't a tool for raised floors uh, in Revit. You can't construct raised floors. But here we used the regular floors. Uh, we used two regular floors, and in between I used columns. And columns are used as little pedestals that are holding the raised floor uh, in place. So th there wasn't a tool for a raised floor. So we just used columns and a couple of floors to get to that solution of creating a raised floor. Uh, moving on, uh, corner windows. So for example, uh, you can't really, you don't really have a great solution for corner windows and in my opinion the best approach is to use a curtain wall. So you use curtain wall and you adapt it, uh, you, you create a new type, you change the mullions, you, you adapt it in multiple fa ways and then you fashion out your, uh, uh, your corner wall which can be adapted uh, to, to any uh, basically shape of a curtain or any size of a corner wall that you can place on your building. Uh, moving on, for example, wall siding. So siding is something that's very often used, especially in the in the U.S. Uh, in buildings and in simple buildings. And sometimes you you don't have to just represent it with an image and a rendering. Sometimes you want to have a section of the building of of a wall where you have siding. So it was very difficult to create siding as just a part of a wall layer, and it's actually impossible. And it takes too much to manually place each kind of sweep along. The, uh, along the edge of the wall, so I decided to use sweeps but not to use them manually, no. I, I use them in, 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 as part of a type of a wall, so it's included in the wall type, so uh, whenever you place this wall you will get siding and then this is great just because when you make openings like doors and windows they cut through that siding so it's a very efficient way to create a siding uh, wall or wall with siding uh, in Revit using some of the tools that Revit has on offer that maybe weren't uh, originally thought, thought of as using for siding. Uh, next, uh, I have the family that will save you so much time, a clickbait title, I must admit, but it is really useful. So, uh, for uh, modeling in Revit, for creating floor plans, uh, uh, you very often have to use some elements for kitchens or storage, like cupboards and closets, things like that, and uh, in those cases you usually have to have some custom made uh, maybe uh, kitchen cabinets or casework things like that so for those elements it's very difficult to model them in place and it takes way too much time so what they tend to do usually is to use a walls and then just make a short wall and then that's a kitchen cabinet or uh, things like that so in this uh, particular uh, tutorial I have created a line based family so you just create a line and then uh, uh, that family appears as casework or cupboard or uh, maybe uh, some sort of a kitchen element that's in that particular length so it can be adapted really quickly so it saves you time when uh, working on your uh, on your projects and designing and moving things around because it's very uh, quick to it's very easy and quick to modify. Uh, moving on, what else? So yeah, also when talking about modifications in my adaptive components in Revit course, I show you how to create these cool families which you can load into project and then you can kind of reshape them and move them around. They're, they're, they're really useful. They're like animated families. Uh, they're, they're quite cool. So uh, you can even use adaptive components to create some families that can adapt to your model when loaded in, which is uh, really useful and something that you should uh, look into. So if you're using some component a lot of times, but it has to be adapted into the project, it might make sense to create an adaptive family for that that you can reuse instead of modeling in place every time. Uh, moving on, uh, of course, cost estimation. So you can do some simple cost estimation, but you, for doing complete project uh, cost estimation, you have to create uh, some alternative solutions. And luckily in Revit, we have a calculated field. So you can calculate multiple parameters for from your schedules to get kind of the final calculated schedule, which you can use then to get your final calculation. 
Moving on, everything you need to know about Stairs and Revit. This is a course on stairs that is available on my Patreon. Again, as I said, first link in the description. In this course, I show you how to use one of the, the, the tools in Revit that people find kind of annoying, and that's the uh, stair tool, just because it's very difficult to operate. But once you get the hang of it, as I've shown you in this course, you can pretty much build any type of stair in Revit. It just uh, takes a significant under understanding of the stair uh, tool and the whole system family, but once you get the hang of it, pretty much any stair is uh, possible within Revit. Moving on, and uh, finally, uh, I have this uh, tutorial on 10 websites where you can find free Revit families. When something cannot be modeled in Revit, you can always find it in a different software and then load it into Revit. A lot of these families that can be found on these websites are not a Revit geometry. There may be uh, SketchUp or, I don't know, maybe 3ds Max geometry, and then they're saved as a Revit family, loaded into Revit, saved as a Revit family, and then upload to, do, to this website. So if it's not available in Revit or if it's too difficult to model in Revit, you can model it uh, or find a model of it in a different piece of software and then just load it into Revit or you can find it uh, already done on one of these websites. So uh, when modeling something in Revit isn't the best solution, well then just load it in. Sometimes making something in Revit isn't the best Revit solution, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's uh, what this video was going to be all about. I just want to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit just to expand your imagination to find or to try to find a creative solution for everything in Revit and al always have an open mind. Uh, if there isn't a tool for something, there is always a hack or a workaround or an uh, alternative use of a different tool that you can be that, that can be used to uh, well get to the solution of your particular problem. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this video. Please tell me in the comment section uh, below what do you think about this? Uh, what's your favorite workaround or hack in Revit? And have you find uh, some of my uh, uh, Revit hacks or tutorials or workarounds in Revit useful? Or do you think it's annoying and you, you wish to have a specific Revit tool for that? Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this uh, video, this, I guess you would call it inspirational Revit video, and I'll be back with another regular tutorial in a couple of days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.